hello everyone good evening i hope everyone is doing great so today we will be learning another topic okay and this is very important okay from both side from 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 performance side or from managing or auditing the history okay so the today topic is managing pega history okay sorry managing pega data type history okay so i'll not be talking about the work because we know that whenever we create any case type okay parallel to that one i mean like basically if we have a work group okay parallel to that work group we have a, a history class as well for work to track those whatever we do on the case but what about the data type okay so let's say here what i have mentioned is that abc date and country list okay so this is the country list uh, which i have a data type let's say and we are managing the country list in a data type okay so this is the data type which will be just the data will be stored okay it will not data will it will be stored by the user not uh, when we are making any changes to the case okay so it's like a predefined data okay let's say we want to populate some drop down with this data right so in that kind of a scenario uh, we use this kind of a data type okay now sometimes business comes and asks that okay i need the history okay that whenever we are changing this data type in the production or in the non prod okay so in this kind of a situations what we can do what all options we have okay so the one options is that yes you can write your own piece of code to track the changes okay maybe you can go for a database uh, a database trigger or you can write something pega pega trigger as well and manage the history in a separate table okay or you can use out of the box track changes okay uh, but that will only work when you have a blob in the table okay but let's say if you are just using okay abc data and country list which will have most mainly three or four attribute right like one 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 column can be id and another one can be country code and country name like right? so in this kind of a table we don't need block okay so what pega does is that most of the time you have seen that or if you go into the create any data type pega will add a parallel class okay history history does abc data does country list okay so the for same class pega will create a history class as well and then whatever will happen what happen is that whenever we do any changes to this country type list okay i mean basically country data type pega creates a history snapshot okay into this class instances so let's so let's go to pega and see that okay so here what i have done is that i have just like created a temporary data type and and in this one you can see that i have already filled some data okay so what i was talking here is that this is my class okay and against this class okay there is a history class as well see here so history qtm so exactly the same class but we have the history class as well now if i say click on that we can see that the history instances is there okay now how we can use this history instances to track the changes like what have happened before right so if you want to do that how we can do it so let's say here i have the value okay you can see that test in address fields and then we have the rest of the fields okay so what i'll do i'll just modify the address and instead of test i'll just uh, put test one okay or test uh, like test india so i'll just make this changes i'll just make this changes test india okay and then saved it now let's go to history instances and see what is happening so let's sort it by create date time and you can see that now we got two instances added at 657 okay so the one is getting added as a null so we can ignore let me click on that so this you can ignore it doesn't have anything okay i need to read more why pega is adding this one but if i click on the second one so though here we can see the create date time is exactly same first pega is creating with the null and then creating with the actual date time so let me click the second one okay and if you see here okay so it's like a rule okay if i go and see the view xml we can see the value so here we can see the value is a like in the address we can see test open this instance so if you see from this one i was talking about this one and from here on from the action we can see view xml so if you do the view xml we can see the previous value so if you see my previous value was address so what pega does is that it will keep it will create a Uh, xml file or basically it will create instance of this class okay in the table of history class in the table and store the previous value okay it won't store that like like what is happening i am seeing that okay people are expecting that i'll get the 
the current and the previous value in this XML. But no, we won't get what Pager is doing is that the keeping the previous value. OK, so let's say previous value is address. And now if I want to compare what is my latest value, then latest value is already there in table. So you can see here we have the test India, right? And this is my previous value. Now let's go and if I here, if I'll go and update it from test India and say New Delhi, I'll just I'm adding. So now this time what we'll see in the in the history in the history we'll see test India. Okay. And the latest value in the in the table is test India New Delhi. So let's see that. Okay. So we I'm saving it. So maybe I saved it twice. So I'll I'll get that latest value. Okay. So here we can see that 659. Let's see that. Okay. View XML. So if you see here, we got the test India. So what, so you're getting it. So what basically Pega is doing is that it's just creating a, a snapshot of your previous instances. So for each update, okay, for each update, whatever we are doing in the table, Pega maintaining a history. And for, from here, we can do the reporting or either like if, you, let's see if you don't want to do the reporting. For the reporting, you maybe need to expose those columns and other things in this class. Because if you see this class has a separate history table. It, it, this class is a separate history table. Let me show you. So if I do test connections, you can see that, okay, it, this is, it created a new class altogether. Okay. Sorry, new table. Okay. So what happens usually I have seen that, okay, that, or even I, I was like, I used to do that. So the moment Pega is creating this history class, okay, sometimes we do, we delete the DV instances or anything. If you do that, then what Pega will do, Pega will map it to PR history and that can create performance issue. So now we understood it that how Pega is managing that. So whatever we are updating, it is keeping an entry here. Okay. So this is this is how we can do that. So let's say if someone is doing a changes in productions and if you want to review that who did it and what time did it. Okay. Then we can do everything from here and you can see that. Let's see what all details we have in view XML. So if you see that all values is already there and then PX update system is there and I think create operator is also there that who is creating. So all the, all those details is there. So from here we can extract the history. Now this is good. Okay. But how, if I want to like, like, let's say if I don't want to create this history, okay, because this table, this is the table is a standalone. I'm updating. Okay. It's a kind of a data, which I just want to show in the drop down or this is like a predefined data. Okay. But what if I, if I'm creating an instance from the like case processing, let's say you are filling a form in your case and then saving something to the data type. So in that kind of scenario, how we can manage. Okay. So basically to handle this, that, okay, that I want this history instances or not. Okay. Pega has the setting. Okay. And Pega has in the background, they have a declare trigger, which is firing. So let's see that where we have the declare trigger. I think, let me see the declare trigger name. So, Think somewhere. Let me see that case dependency trigger. There was a declare trigger name which is firing and then doing this work. Uh, let me see. Let me search with base class. No, not this one. I need to find out. Okay. So basically in the back end, okay, if you trace, you'll find out that Pega is calling a declare trigger. So what if you don't want to have this? Because what is happening? Okay, each time when we are making the changes, okay, it is creating a two instances. Okay. And in this one, it is it is saving entire things in the blob. So this is good. One side, this is good if you want to track the changes, but other side, it can impact your performance as well. And that is where this article is saying, okay. So maybe I'll attach this article. Uh, I'll, I'll share this uh, article link in the video. So Pega is saying omitting, his, omitting history snapshot for the data types. So basically if you don't want, okay, how you can change the settings, okay, because each time it is writing the data in the blob, okay. So if you go to the original class, okay, so not the history class, okay, so let me go to that original class. So my original class is, original data type class is this one. So if I open this class and go to definition, let me show you definition and in advanced tab in the advanced in advanced tab if i'll go down you can see that bypass history on save so we have these settings okay so what uh, uh, by default pega what pega is doing keeping the default okay default one so default one means create a history snapshot when you click and save 
with click save or delete do not create a snapshot when you call obj save or delete directly so basically whenever we are making any changes from data type it will create an instance and that is what it is doing we have seen that right but if we are doing explicitly like using obj save or obj delete then it won't create okay and if you want to uh, true if, if you really want to bypass then just select that you don't want the history so you need to review case by case basis you need to understand that do i read then uh, do i need the history okay if not then maybe you can simply say true i don't want I, I want to completely bypass or you can keep it default okay that whenever you are making the changes by like using data types okay and you want to keep a track of the changes then you can select default or if you want to like uh, track all the times create history snapshot regardless how you save the instances of that class then you can mark it false okay so definitely you should consider reviewing this because usually in our applications we will have like tons of data types right and for that pega creates that so don't miss the settings and and make sure that you have your uh, make sure you have uh, your history classes and corresponding table if you delete the table instances as i'm saying and class is there if class is there and then class is the concrete so if i show you let's say this class is there right so if i show this class this is a concrete class so this here let me show you so this is a concrete class so if i do a test connection see you can see that it is mapped to a separate table but if i'll go like okay usually we do that right during deployment what we do we don't deploy this kind of a things history one okay we usually miss it so if you're missing it what will happen let's say that if i'll go and delete the database table for this one history one so you can see that this is the history uh, co-applicant details so if i delete it then what will happen pega will map that one to peer underscore history now i have deleted it right so if i'll do here you can see that it got mapped to peer underscore history so this could be more dangerous because peer history already having other history okay lot of other history types and and again we are mapping this one also to peer history so this can create a more uh, performance issue so I'll just restore and then do a test connection. So then it will come back to that same table. So here is my class, this class. So now I have created and if I'll do, then I'm mapping the correct one. So don't don't miss the settings. Uh, uh, don't miss uh, this settings, okay? Because this settings has the pros and cons both, okay? So you need to understand and review your case by case when you are creating a data type, and you need to see that if I have to track, then keep this history table, okay? and move along with this like from dev to prod okay and even if you don't need it move your db like uh, this table and this table and everything and make the changes from this advanced settings okay and you need to do from the the actual class not from the history class in uh, history class so this is the actual class my data type class not the history one and in the advanced tab we have this bypass history on save okay so this this will definitely help in your performance as well as in the tracking or for editing so this is it for today's class i hope this quick class will will help you a lot okay and and from future you'll keep you'll review this you'll review these settings